My name is Wendy and I'm back with Books and Wine the podcast and on this episode we meet a sommelier uh, who works internationally and on the high seas and we get to catch up on what that looks like on a day to day and also he shares some very interesting tips on how you can drink wine and enjoy it. Stay tuned for the science behind pairing your food with your wine so you'll never have to guess again. Welcome to Books and Wine, the podcast, Daniel Mwangi. Karibu sana. Asante sana. It was a pleasure to meet you by chance at the Wine Expo and were introduced by someone we mutually know. The OG, <laughs> <Wine Zero. laughs> I know. I'm so glad I jumped on the opportunity to just speak with you, book a meeting with you, and see, um, you know, just have a chat. Because I'm always very much intrigued by wine. Uh, and most importantly, I always want to demystify it. And I'm sure out of this conversation, there will be something that somebody can pick up about wine and use them, use it in their lives, yeah. you know. So, Karibu Sana, you want to Sante say hi sana. to the people? Hi, Books and Wine people. This is Daniel. Um, uh, be nice to be here back home to meet uh, good people who are doing great things and uniting people through wines. Because, yeah. as we say in the wine industry, the wine unites people. Yeah. yeah even Jesus uh, made some wine for a wedding. So, <laughs> <laughs> we need to continue this legacy. You know, I know. Wines, yeah? Yeah. It didn't make whiskey. It didn't nope. make uh, gin. No. Didn't make rum. Why, why, why? It has to be wine. Not yeah. rum, not cognac, not nothing like that. It was I, just wine. It yeah. uh, makes wine very special, and uh, we're happy for that. Yes. yes. Um, so, before we get into wine and everything, uh, I know briefly that you're a sommelier. Yes. Uh, in layman's terms, can you what what does a sommelier mean? What does a sommelier da, do? Mm. Yeah, like what does that look like for you in action? So sommelier, there are different type of sommeliers. Mm-hmm. There is a cigar sommelier, uh, tea sommelier also, and I had also in Saudi Arabia there is uh, some water sommelier. Are you serious? Yeah, they have different types of water that they taste because uh, alcohol is not really much appreciated there. Yes, it's available, but yeah. it will not be like readily and openly sold like here in Kenya. So there are wow. people who do also wine sommelier. There's different types of water, yeah. Okay, so they, okay. they, I'm they taste those kind of stuff. Yeah. Tea sommeliers also there is because these are guys who specialize in tea. Yeah. Uh, so but sommelier is a general word, but mostly the commonly known sommelier is wine sommelier, but we don't necessarily say wine sommelier. Yes, sommelier. We say sommelier because yeah. already you can say sommelier in French or just stick to what we know. We just say sommelier. Yeah. Uh, so that is just dealing with wine. Since you are specialized in wine, mm-hmm. you study wine, you drink wine, you taste wine, you analyze wines, yeah. and you talk about wine to people. That So that is basically what we do. We uh, you have to study more, understand it, because you need to explain something to someone that you already know. Yeah, the person we are referring to, uh, when we say sommelier, mm. typically is the wine sommelier. Yes. Who is uh, dealing with wines yeah. and familiar with wines. Yes. And works by advising customers mostly yeah. about what the wine they're drinking or what, what wine they should drink. Yeah, yes, correct? yes. That's okay. basically what we do. Okay, but yeah. how does somebody get started? Ah, it's a long process. It's mm-hmm. the same way, uh, like you doing books. You had to also read books uh, yeah. to have that and uh, that kind of push for you to understand books and that enthusiasm to understand books. Yeah. So basically, you need to be passionate. very interested and passionate about wines. Yeah. But where does this come from? So you cannot just wake up and just uh, see wines. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a journey that you begin by understanding, wanting to understand why. Yeah. So you start from there. There is uh, there are courses that you do mm-hmm. uh, to understand the wine. There are mostly the common one is called WSCT Wine and Wines and Spirits Education Trust. Mm-hmm. There is Court of Master Sommeliers. Depends, but what is available mostly here in Kenya will be the WSCT. WSCT. Uh, court of Master Sommeliers, yes, you can study online, but most exams you have to either do in Europe, mm, mm. Uh, China, those sites, Tokyo, 
all states. So it depends where you're from. But in Africa, yeah. CMS, you have to go and do the exam there. But you can study online. Yeah. There's so many things you can study. Wine Scholar Guild is also yeah. available. Okay. Uh, IWS, so many. But the okay. most basic and most interesting one, easy for a person who's beginning, is WSET. Okay. That's a state. So yeah. basically, like any other profession, you have to go to school mm. and get learn. I mean, get taught in the in the craft. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So it's interesting to hear you talk about you know the various options that are available mm. even for people locally. Yeah. You know who want to follow this career path. Yeah. But I'm interested to know like how maybe your first interactions with wine, like what was the moments mm. that you know got you interested and mm. got you on this journey. Yeah. If you can recount the highlights for us. Yeah. yeah. What was that like for Daniel? So um as I said you cannot just wake up and just say, Oh I want to study one. You have to also in a way to interact with it. Yeah, Either so, by first of all drinking Maybe yeah. meeting a friend who understands wine, yeah. let you taste wine, and you're like, oh, okay, I want to learn this thing. Yeah. So for me, it came in Dubai when I was working there in a hotel. Okay. Uh, because I moved from Kenya 2014, 2015. Okay. So by 2017, I got a chance to uh, to work in a hotel because previously I was in a bakery. Yeah. Bakery, just baking breads and whatever and sandwiches. Yeah. But then after some time, 2017, after two years in Dubai, yeah. I got a chance to work in a hotel. It's called Renaissance Hotel. It's part of Marriott Hotel. Okay. So there, uh, it's fine dining restaurants. For sure, you are more exposed to wines. Mm. Because in a restaurant, you need to sell wines, uh, pay a food with wine yeah. for guests. It's a typical restaurant, uh, restaurant kind of environment. So yeah. for sure, you have to deal with... Uh, wine. So from that, I have started to understand because you need to understand what you're selling. Yeah. So by understanding what I'm selling, also you had to start reading about it. Yes. Because wine is not easy. You start from grace, yes. it goes to countries, goes to regions. Yeah. So from that, we started uh, developing uh, the urge to learn so that I'll be able to explain to a guest yeah, a wine because most of these guests it's not that they don't know wines yeah. it's not like you're t- also talking to guests who don't know wine sometimes yeah. if a guest orders a steak and tells you to recommend a wine for sure it's not their first time to yeah. drink wine so you can never go wrong mm. so you just needed to understand the basics like maybe red meat with red wine white meat with white wine but also there is also rules to be broken so by that you need to research yeah so from that the management of course sees that you're doing good sales and you are trying to learn more asking the head so many years because in most hotels and most fine dining restaurants there's also different levels of sommeliers there's a junior there's a sommelier there is a head Mm. there's a wine director so for sure if they see that you're asking these questions yeah they start to put you in the program yeah they put you in the program to learn so they put me in the program okay to start level one yeah as i said yeah then after some time i believe less than a year i did again the level two because when you pass level one Mm -hmm. you're eligible to do level two so by uh, the company again put me to do level two. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, after that, now level two is now you get more in depth in the understanding the wine. It's not just basic because yeah. level one is no, basic. You're... What is wine? What is grapes? What is what? Yeah. Uh, but when you go to level two, now you start to understand regions, food pairings. Yeah. Different countries, different regions of different countries that produce different wines. Yes. So now you start to understand. Very well. So it, that was my journey. Uh, I, I started to do those courses. Yes. Okay. Mm. That's that's interesting. Mm. Um, as an aside, mm. like before you started interacting with wine professionally, mm. as a drinker, is it something that you had been keen on? Or if not, if you were keen on other drinks, have you fallen out of love with... I don't know, maybe whatever else that yeah, whatever was your else. default. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember sometime I used also to, when I go to supermarket, Yeah. Uh, I had not really gotten into know, to know wine in the uh, best way possible. Yeah. Before I even went to Dubai, I uh, remember one day going to Carnival and I went to, I can't remember, was Tuskies or what in uh, uh, in town and just go to the wine department, the, the liquor store inside the supermarket. And yeah. I like just to take the wines. Yeah. Eight, I did not know anything about, but it messed me up that day, I remember. <laughs> because 
I took a very full body wine that I had no idea about and we were drinking like it's a shot, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, very fast. So because also in, when it comes to this through uh, now my experience through this way that you can understand mm-hmm. on uh, alcohol levels yeah. so you don't get messed up very fast yeah uh, this is called ABV alcohol by volume that's always written in bottles yeah which is like the percentage percentage that's yeah written. Uh, so that time I had not checked I don't know we just take it it's 15 years is low but also mm-hmm. how you drink how the fast you drink but also and how, how fast mm-hmm. you drink yeah also messes you up fast Mm. Because wine, let's say right now we have a glass of wine, you take, you drink it within maybe half an hour or something. Yeah. That process, the slower you drink, the yeah. more uh, intoxicated, the less intoxicated you'll be. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a very good uh, illustration of a lot of people's interactions with wine. Yeah. And a lot, uh, most people, like for instance, just like any other alcoholic drink. Mm-hmm. When you engage with it and you're not fully, fully aware of yeah. what you're doing, yeah. uh, it can be a, end up being a bad experience. Yeah, it can and be. And then you... Because you, know, you need to you take every, the business. You know, like, wine is... I don't agree with wine. Yeah. You know, is there something like that, by the way? Because there are no. some people who swear, like, me, my body doesn't agree with wine. <laughs> no, because uh, the, this can only um, be... Uh, that's the time you do your nice research. Mm-hmm. Like, to understand or ask somebody who knows... So, if it's your first time in wine, mm-hmm. is if it's your first time drinking wine, you need to start from the basics, light body, less alcohol level. Yeah. Uh, this is the ABV I'm talking about. Yeah. But also, and also the speed you drink it. You, you cannot drink wine like you're drinking uh, a Coke tequila. or a tequila. <laughs> tequila, yes, okay, it's yeah, shots, yeah. yeah? Okay, yes. It's meant to be shots. <laughs> but wine you don't do, because you can have a very bad experience if you drink uh, the wrong wine mm-hmm. for, for the wrong purpose. Or even on an empty stomach. On an empty stomach, especially mm-hmm. that. And wine really, it has a very, very weird feeling if you it does not agree with you. That's yeah. for sure. Because uh, it's, it's made different. It's a different kind of alcoholic beverage. It's not like other things that it's just... Wine has a lot of flavors and characteristics as compared to, say, a vodka. Mm-hmm. When you taste a vodka, it's just vodka. Yeah. You're not really, uh, really looking into tasting. I don't know umamis. I don't know. I don't know which flavors. <laughs> red fruits, white fruits. It's the minerality, uh, minerality of the soil. Acidity. <laughs> you're not doing. You're not looking uh, to taste those in things like vodka. But in wine, they have all those things. Yeah. Uh, that you need to pay attention to. That's that's the idea now of appreciating wine. Mm. But when you start to understand wine well, it becomes a very nice acquired taste mm-hmm. that you start to understand. And to uh, drink intentionally. Intentionally, you to, you know the right time to drink it. You know how to drink it. Uh, Sometimes also you understand how to serve it. Yes. What type of glass we have to serve it in. What, how much and time you need to open this wine. It, it, it need to be treated well. It need to be treated with respect. So wine is a diva. Like, it's a diva. You must it's a lady. With respect. Need to be, it's a lady. Need to be taken care of. Yeah. In a nice way, you know. For so, it to give you the best experience. Yes, for that. I'm. I'm glad you mentioned something about, um, like, say, part of your, some of your initial experiences. Yeah, yeah. And that's a thing that I find, of course, uh, mainstream when you research on wine, and yeah. you'll always come across pairing. Yes. Uh, but granted, there's times that you'll consume wine. Uh, when you're eating, yes. But mostly, there's also times that people just want to have a good time yes. with alcohol involved, yeah. without necessarily having a meal attached a meal. to it. Yes, yes. Maybe it's a night out. Yes. Maybe you're, you know, um, is this is wine something that you can have at the club mm-hmm. or at a party just mm-hmm. for the sake of, you know, enjoying a good time? Yes. And if so, what are some of the considerations that somebody can take into account? Like. Are yes. there certain wines that go well with just easy drinking without having to think about food? Yeah. Yes. So this is now where the age comes in mm-hmm. and the type of grape. Those two things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and region will come in later, but understanding first of all the type of grape mm-hmm. and the age of that wine. So, good example. There are some grapes, let's say... Uh, this is also where you also need to understand 
what mm-hmm. are these grave varieties you're talking about okay. so if you are not aware of what grave varieties are yeah then to be kind of difficult also for you you, you to, get into trouble you be in trouble yeah but then that's why i say this is a This is a this is a drink where you need to kind of research the like yeah. you want to know you can't when be blind you cannot just go blind <laughs> it's not like uh, try buy any type of uh, vodka i like to give that example because the most basic uh, example yeah. the best example to compare yeah. when it comes to not complex yeah, 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 yeah. those complex ones distilled yes. distilled distilled that's it it's yeah. a taste you mix it with something drink yeah. it uh, forget but when it comes to wine mm-hmm. you need to understand first of all grape varieties they are and that now this is where the body comes in mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. let's say on a night out on a club i uh, or in your balcony somewhere uh, afternoon sunday afternoon yeah. glass of wine you don't you're not even eating anything so at that time you might not really go with a very full body wine mm-hmm. uh, be- because let's say you had not even eaten lunch or you didn't have lunch yeah. you just you, you go with a very full body wine let's say with high acidity with high tannins uh with uh, it's very full body yeah that one is going to hit you hard it's going to hit you hard because also and also the age mm. this is where age comes in so an older wine older wine you want to reserve that for food is that yes, is that true would be nice for food mm-hmm. but also you can do an older wine especially let's say you open it prior like you want okay you know i'm hanging out in my balcony at 3 o'clock yeah. this wine you open it at 1 o'clock you leave it in a decanter or in You know, if you have a nice glass where you leave it some time yeah. and you will not have the whole bottle possibly if you are two people you can sip slowly nicely to open up yeah. you actually appreciate it more if it, it opens up mm-hmm. a young wine especially young wines and full body grapes yeah. uh, like uh, grape varieties like cabernet sauvignon like merlot if you try those on an empty stomach and it's just very young it's just opened it Yeah. It will really going to hit. It's not going to be the best drinking experience. You might hate wine actually. You might really hate it. Uh, I hate the wine because it's high in acidity, high in tannins, high in alcohol level. Maybe it's 14.5, it's 15. Yeah. Could be uh, straight up upset straight your up. stomach. Yeah, straight up it will upset. But if you are on a nice sunny day and you take let's say a pinot noir. Yeah. A young pinot noir, very fresh, very fruity, very refreshing. Or like a rosé. Or a rosé. Yeah, you yeah. see that is very easy. It's very nice to your stomach even if you do not eat. It is very nice. Yeah. Uh you can have a like so this is where the body will come in ah. and the age. Yeah. But mostly the grape variety comes in yeah. at then the age because grape like Pinot Noir whether yeah. it's older or young is still a light body. Okay. Yeah? Okay. But when you go come that's for the right. Yes. That's for the red. Yeah, that's so for red. So for white what are the like some of the grapes that you know some varietals that are easy drinking why it's usually mm-hmm. uh easy to be honest depends mm-hmm. only a few grape varieties that you need to appreciate and you need to have time to understand them mm-hmm. uh, on a nice hot day you want a very chilled white wine basic thing is chilled yeah, yeah. then grapes like sauvignon blanc uh, grapes like uh, chardonnay chardonnay yes uh, Riesling, if you like, you have a sweet tooth, a little bit. Yeah. Muscat, if you have, uh, those, those are nice grapes. White wines is not really as complex. It's not very as complex as the red wine. As the red, red wine is the yeah. one yeah. that yeah. Uh, puts people into problems. Into problems. <laughs> But some, uh, then also depends what you have bought and from which country. There's some mm-hmm. whites that also you need to pair with some something, like food. Okay. Let's say a very important Chardonnay from France. Yeah. Okay. from a shabli area or from if you are, have some deep pockets to buy some grand cruz you know okay. that's not a wine that you just open it just anyhow only it just start to sip <laughs> you need this wine in a special kind of show and some of them are expensive it yeah, could be a thousand sure. dollars could be i don't know yeah. 100 dollars 200 dollars that's Ooh, very high dollar price. is at 150 as yeah, yes <laughs> yeah. nice grand cru you will not get it at cheap price no yeah so, so i suppose uh, that's not the wine that you you know you just take for granted mm. it's a, it's definitely the way that you say for an occasion yes. you just you yes. know you even dress up because you dress up you for it you know a <laughs> special someone somewhere you're going to open nice that food. thousand dollar way yes. <laughs> with an important <laughs> meal also yeah. for sure for sure yeah okay that's good i think that's a good tip uh, in terms of what wines to drink when you're not 
uh, when you're just having an easy time, when yes. you're not trying to complicate your life, yes. when it's just Some you simple and a nice yeah. afternoon. Uh, Some Pinot Grigios for the white. Yeah. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Muscat, Frieslings. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice grape. But white one, white wines is not complicated. As, mm-hmm. as long as you chill it, yeah. nice sunny day, it helps to help because what you need in white wine is acidity. White yes. wine does not have tannins. Yes. It has it just has acidity and most white wine will not be so high in ABV. You know? Yeah. Twelve point five, thirteen point five. If mm-hmm. you find a fifteen or fourteen point five, those are the important ones I'm saying. Yeah. Why do we use this word important? Okay. This important word is when you talk about wines that really they are very important. Like I said, the no, I'm, I'm expensive. Sure, yes. <laughs> you know, those, I have a couple of bottles also at home. I don't open them for the last two years. You yeah. Know? You, you keep them, for... you save them for something special, a special day or a, a day that I'll be having a very ni- nice meal or very important guest. Mm-hmm. Those are the wines that you preserve. But some simple grades, uh, uh, White wines usually you enjoy them young. They are not really meant to age for long, mm-hmm. as compared to some uh, important red wines. Yeah. Uh, some white red uh, white uh, white wines simple. Last year, two years ago, three okay. years. If it goes for over fifteen years for a white wine, yeah. then you need to give it time and give it nice attention. Open it, put in a decanter, mm-hmm. have a very nice heavy meal. I don't know oysters. Treat it or like something. a red. <laughs> you treat it very important, uh, like so, special. Yeah. Um, is, you mentioned that. Bit. Something about like the age of the wine, yes. and maybe for somebody who is wondering what that means. Mm. So t- most wines will have a denotation of the age, right? Yes. yes. So that's what uh, you refer to as vintage. And yes. So for instance, like an, a typical bottle will say Sauvignon Blanc 2019, 2019 or yes. 2022. Yes. So typically, when you say a wine is young, what I'm say for a white, what are we talking about? Is it Two years, one year, five years. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to age, mm-hmm. something young is two years, three years. Mm-hmm. If it goes more than five years, there, there are different characteristics that you start to taste in that wine. Mm-hmm. But it's still also not that old. Okay. Ten, you can consider, okay, this is old wine. This is yeah. an old. Ten, eight, nine. Uh, for sure, there are even wines that are 100 years old. Yes, yes. yes they're they very <laughs> I've old. I've had, I think I've only seen, yeah. not tasted, I've only seen like a 40 year old wine. Yes. And it was even kept in a glass case. Yes. <laughs> are, you know, because you don't have accidents around that thing. <laughs> they are, especially when it comes to normal red, uh, normal dry wines. Yeah. Uh, you can find all that, but mm, sweet wines, especially. Things like port wines, you can mm-hmm. find even 200 years old wines. Wow. 1889. They're too. still okay because it still is high, has a high level of sugar, high level of alcohol, alcohol. that preserves the wine more. Okay. Something like a port wine and it's 200 years old because it's very, very sweet yeah. and it's very high in alcohol in yeah. that category of wines because yeah. more than 15% is usually considered very high. Yeah. And you, if you find more than 15%, most likely those wine will be classified in a different category. They will not be normal like normal uh, wine. Normal dry wines or normal wines. They will yeah. maybe be called a port wines. Uh, they are actually 45. called fortified wines. Yeah. yeah. Let's say port port wine from yeah. Portugal or de- other dessert wines like Moscato, uh Sauten from France. Yeah. Those you find them they can age because what happens the sugar helps okay. to preserve the wine. Uh, ah. For longer, they will not spoil as quickly as, as a normal, regular, dry regular dry wines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They can age for long, and there's a different method that they do to make it uh, age potential. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. But also red wine, you find the age even the age more. You yeah. find more older red wines, but also white wines mm-hmm. you can find. But ne- now it mm-hmm. depends where they're made from and for what purpose and what kind of idea. Uh, they are doing uh, not just basic white wine. Yeah, mm-hmm. basic white wine you might not really find out uh, uh, really aging, aged wine. you know, aging, yeah. declining quality. Yeah, because if you keep still this idea of aging, aging, and I don't know, older wine is better. It's, it's not always. Like, it's very debatable. <laughs> Depends with the condition you keep this wine. Yeah, and how 
uh, much potential, age potential this wine was. Mm -hmm. You don't make a normal, let's say in Kenya, we just grow some grapes somewhere in Meru, we just make, I don't know, a regular Pinot Gris, just simple, without, uh, maybe it's not very high in acidity, yeah. uh, there's so many variables. Maybe it's a warm climate, it's very, very fruity, mm -hmm. then you want to keep this wine for, I don't know, 100 years, or 50 years, for sure. You're, you're better off drinking your wine today. You better drink your wine earlier because the grape variety also yeah. is a lighter body kind of grape variety that mm -hmm. cannot allow that heavy aging potential. So it's very debatable. Mm. It's not all so this whole, wines that are old that are good. No, yeah. it depends so the, on the grape varieties the is, in the region. Yeah, it's also like a collective, collecting thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like yes. It's not necessarily yes. that they're doing it for utility purposes. No. Uh, it's, keep. Yeah, mm. so it's a whole other business. Like the collecting thing is also not necessarily a consuming. Yeah, like <laughs> I have a couple of a bottles. Consuming ex ex activity, yeah. Yeah, I have a couple bo of bottles in my house. Mm -hmm. If you visit me, I will not possibly open those wines. I would rather go to a supermarket and buy a new wine. Yeah. And uh, I will check. Well, how special you are, you know, it depends yeah. also. And what are we it, celebrating? You know, what are we celebrating <laughs> and how, how how special is that guest that you have? Yeah. Then I can buy something from that. But I would rather buy, go and buy, yeah. no matter the price, than open what I have at home. Because some of the wines I have at home, I've traveled the, uh, yeah. with them yeah. uh, <laughs> from far distance. Yeah. So I will not just open that wine. So basically that wine has the different value for you. Yes. It's more sentimental. It's more sentimental. I know where I bought them from. Yeah. Yeah. I have some wine that I bought in a winery in Italy. Yeah. Like in the winery. Yes. There's no way I'm opening <laughs> that wine. You're not about just to anyone. drink it. No, That's even for myself. Yeah. yeah no. So that's the same way you'd keep your vacation pictures and yes. look back at that and be like, wow, yeah. I was here, I yes. did this. Yes. And you have fond memories of that. Some of them you're given specifically. You know, as in the wine industry, what we do, we like mm -hmm. to kind of gift each other with a special bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. Could be one, could be a small. Doesn't no matter the price or the, the, the value or the size. But yeah. still, there's some wine that I will get. Like me as a sommelier, I would appreciate, I will even keep a wine for 50 years if I was given by our winemaker. Mm. A, a prominent winemaker that I know, wow, this guy gave me a bottle of his wine. Mm. It, it is very special that mm. a person even letting go of that wine to give you, and yeah. it's a winemaker, instead of selling to you, yeah. I'll not just go and uh, misuse it and open it's it true. and just, no, I'll keep it. As a sign for, of your friendship know, and... Yes. And, and every moment. time I take a picture, I send him your bottle is still here. <laughs> it can even go, it can even spoil. Yeah, but, I but know that's the okay. Wine is there. That's okay for us. <laughs> this was my gift. Yeah, this was oh. a gift from this winemaker. Maybe he signed for you mm. uh, the back of the bottle. So I'm it, it depends. I just remember that mm. actually this this phenomenon is very human, mm. and it's not just unique to drinks, wine, whiskeys, or whatever. Mm. Uh, there's a whole culture for say like people who love shoes. Yes. Sneakerheads, like yes. people who collect. Yeah, they like, collect. Okay, sneakers. I have a 1980 uh, Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan you know, special edition. This, yes, that, yes, that, yes, that. Yes. And for them, they will not wear that shoe and step on the street. Never. They are oh. not trying to ruin that shoe or go with it to the shop or They will make a box, glass box, and keep it somewhere in the wardrobe or exactly. whatever in the sitting room. Exactly. Yeah, so, so uh, moving a little bit into something else that you had mentioned, like. Mm. Uh, so part of your job as a sommelier mm. is advice on pairing with food. Mm. And from my little research mm. into wine and mm. food, um, a lot of the advice granted that you see online or in books mm. is written from a different cuisine, mostly Mediterranean, European. Mm. Mm. So I always struggle with like, you know, pairing and yeah, food. Yeah, uh, because, yes, I could eat salmon, but where am I coming across salmon on a regular day? In <laughs> when I'm having a meal, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, typically, if I'm eating fish, I'll eat tilapia, tilapia yeah. or the patch, yes. or, you know, some sea fish, mm. which also in Nairobi, in Mombasa, yes, but in Nairobi, not Seafood really. in Nairobi, yeah. It's yeah. You, also do, you also don't have yeah, to take chances have, yeah, with yeah. it, mm. you know, because also... It's traveled miles. <laughs> it has I've traveled a traveled. couple of hundred of kilometers. <laughs> True. So you also don't have to take chances with it. Yeah. So there's that. There's also like our own uh, unique things that we eat, say like ugali with uh, skuma, yeah. uh, with mayai, yeah. uh, our finger foods is different. Uh, we'll eat samosas, we'll yeah. eat choma sausage. Yeah. 
uh, smokies and uh, That's what tricky. else? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if somebody is looking for internet-based mm. advice on food and wine, I mm. always find it a challenge. Yeah. Basic rule is mm -hmm. white with white, red with red. So what what, what do I mean? Uh, white wine would possibly go well uh, with white meats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. White meats is your chicken. Is your the fish we have here. Mm -hmm. Uh, what you just mentioned, they are all white fish, yeah? Yeah. But also when you're pairing food, you need to consider the sauce you're using. Okay. Because, and the sweetness. There's so many things you consider when pairing food. There yeah. is something called, um, it is now the sweetness. Yeah. Uh, there is salt. Uh-huh. There is acidity. And there's something, there's spiciness. Okay. And there is uh, umami. Mm -hmm. So... Let's go Let's one by one. Break it down. Yeah. Break it down. So, with the which one to begin with? Okay, let's. Okay, let's start with the um, salt? sauces or salt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, when you mention those five uh, characters, yeah, that's what guides you to pair. So okay. salt. So salt. Remember, is a base from our chemistry. Uh, I don't know. Ah, those yes, many yes, yes, ago, yes. Yeah. yeah. Be, many uh, years ago. Acid actually. and bases. Acid and bases. The pH. Yeah. Yes. So, salt. Yeah. Salt will go very well with acidity. Okay. They will neutralize each other. Mm. For your chemistry. Mm. So when you have a salty dish, that's mm. why when we talk about like uh, smokies. oysters, smokies that are salty, mm. you it will pair well with something that is acidic, mm -hmm. as an acidic wine. And the other way around also. Okay. Although they will not be a salty wine. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so there's the basic. They will neutralize each other. This okay. is this is called uh, ah, comparative. So basically, uh, your contrast. This is called mm, contrast. Contrast, taste, contrast taste pairing. Mm. Yeah. Because there is comparative, which is called congruent. Mm -hmm. But let's use the simple word comparative, and there is contrast mm -hmm. uh, pairing. So for contrast mm -hmm. is what I just mentioned: salt yeah. and acidity. So low pH, high pH. Yes. Oysters. Yeah. With uh, a brute uh, champagne or a. Prosecco will not be really brute, yeah. Uh, but with a champagne or anything else that is a brute, yeah. So we already know this word brute is acidic, yes. Uh, is a dry, dry. I mean, dry yeah. sparkling, mm -hmm. or any dry white wine. Mm -hmm. That would be the best pairing because yeah. what will happen, they will mm -hmm. neutralize each other. Thank you. And I'm thinking like cured meats or this um, uh, ready to eat meats, yes. Tend to be preserved with, with sodium. salt, yeah, yeah, and so, a lot of salt and spiciness, but yeah, mostly so like it's salty. Ham, yeah. yeah, like your hams and your. Yeah. So with the let's say your hams, mm -hmm. nice acidic, high uh, tannic wine. Okay, it's okay, nice. okay, red. okay. This is red now. Yeah. When you're talking about ham, you're not talking about white. Okay. White, uh, white wine. That's why the basic rule of the dam is white with white, red mm. with red. So then, but then you can now. That's what I'm trying to explain. Break it down further. Break it down. So mm -hmm. that's why the oysters will be the best to go with a brute. Mm -hmm. Or a fish, now going to the fish. Mm -hmm. The fish, what will you be putting? It's mostly, I don't know, lemon dressing or a piece oh, of yes. lemon. You, uh, yeah, you drizzle. drizzle on the top. It's acidity. Also, acidity will go well with acidity. So, what do I mean? So, mm. you're putting lemon yeah, yeah. In a fish, on a fish. Then you have also a dry white wine. Yes. It's also acidic. Okay. Those also is now this is be comparative pairing because they are both they compare. Both, they both meet each other. They, they are both the same kind of flavors. Yeah. Mm. Or let's say a cheese which is very creamy. Okay. With a creamy chardonnay. Yeah. This is comparative. Mm. But also a cheese that is very salty can also pair well with the same Chardonnay, yeah. which is creamy, but, but also, also high in acidity. acidity. Okay, okay. So you're okay. still not going far away from salt with acidity, acidity with acidity. The okay. worst thing you can do, Yeah. and now I'll go to sweetness, okay. because we just talked about salt and acidity. Yes. Now, sweetness. Yeah. Sugar, uh, and we do this mistake. When I see we do weddings and you have a cake and you have a bottle of, I don't know, Moesh and Dawn and whatever, yes. a very brute. Yes, uh, a brute, a brute, brute sparkling. Sparkling. Yeah. And you have a sweet cake. This mm. is the worst kind of pairing. And that's why, yes, it's good for the show that you, I don't know, you're popping <laughs> champagne. It's good. This and also that this it. event is momentous. It's momentous. <laughs> I don't know. Nice moment, nice memorable moment. But pairing wise, 
for a wedding. Okay, let's forget that. It's a different scenario. But on a normal day that you're sitting in your dining and you just had your dinner and there's a dessert, yeah, which is a cake or anything that has sweetness, That's sugar, you yeah. don't ever pair with a brute or with a dry white mm. wine or with any dry wine. You do it with sweet. With so sweet. again, comparative okay. ah. sweet with sweet. So and on the food aspect, sorry, and the food aspect, I'm thinking things like that have like sugar dressing or honey glaze. This why I was saying yeah. for the food, mostly as sommelier, we don't just check the food like the actual I don't know protein, meat or what. Yeah, but we check also what sauce comes with this. Ah. It is a sweet sauce yeah. and you have a steak like, with a very sweet cranberry sauce. And we do, I don't know, turkey with cranberry sauce. Yeah, or yeah. honey glaze, honey pork glaze. ribs. See, now that sweetness will yeah. mess up with your wine. Ah, so you definitely want a sweet red. Sweet red, a little bit slightly, let's say a red blend that is sweet. Uh, mm. That would be nice. Okay, yeah. okay. Or, I don't know, uh, you cannot have two types of wine anyway. You can consider a little bit slightly sweeter wine. Mm. Because, you know, but still has higher acidity, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I mean higher tannings. Mm-hmm. Because remember tanning and sweetness, they, uh, they, they can work together well. Mm. It could be have a little bit higher tanning, it will be lower in acidity because it's sweet. But still has higher tanning because what what do tanning do to this to protein? They break down. They break proteins. it down. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So still you can play with that. It mm. Has higher tannings, but still slightly sweeter. Not, not really not overly very sweet. Dry. Yeah. 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 Not overly sweet. Yeah? Then you can ah, do with that because of the sauce. I see. But I if see. you're eating a steak with just a nice peppercorn sauce, or I don't know, not a very very, not a sweet sauce at all, or yeah. just a beef bijou. They call it bijou. It's a beef ju. Yeah. Just boiled, blanched, uh, I don't know, bones or whatever, it's yeah. a sauce, they do with that, yeah? Yeah. Uh, then, it will be, they are all meat kind of flavors. Yeah. Then you do a very dry, tannic, acidic wine. Mm. Nice one. Then also you consider the fat of the steak. Also, steak is very confusing. Yeah. Meat, let's just say meat, yeah? Yes. Because if you have a very fatty meat, Okay. Strip loin, whatever. Uh, you will not go with a light body wine. You go with a high acidic and full body wine mm. and high tannic wine. Because what will happen, what will happen, sorry, yeah. is if you have a very fatty steak, you need the, the acidity, tanning to every, break down the, the fats, you need yeah? To cleanse your to palate. Bring in. <laughs> yes. And you remember, that pairing, brings everything yes. acidity, tannins, and body. And body. Mm. And remember, I see some people doing this mistake. Yeah. That you just finish eating and you take a glass of wine at the end of your meal. No, pairing is not like that. Pairing is you bite and you sip. Yeah. You bite, you sip. So you're chewing chew everything together. together. So they are pairing. Mm. The, the tanning, the acidity, everything in that red wine breaks down the protein. Helps okay. you also okay. to cleanse your palate. Ah. Remember, fat is thick, the fat sticks yeah, yeah, in yeah, your yeah, gum. For yeah. sure, for you sure. That. That, okay. So that's how you do. So, and then something else, we finish all those four. Mm-hmm. Then umami. Umami, usually you find it in mushrooms. Mm. So how it's can mostly you... in Japanese cuisine. They okay. have that umami. It's you not be coming across this umami a lot. Yeah. But sometimes there's some meals that you cook, and you balance the sugar, you balance the acidity, and you eat that meal, and it hits you different. Like oh, there's some mm. flavor I don't get it. It's savoriness. It's mm. balance between acidity, saltiness, and sweetness. That mm. is umami. So like. Utamu, too. Utamu, kakaflani. You, know? <laughs> you cook a nice biryani and I don't know, a nice steak with a nice sauce, hits the rice salt and everything. Yeah. You taste the food. Besides all that, all those flavors that you're familiar with, there's yeah. some flavor that like, what is that flavor that is very appealing? That is mm. umami. But the best example is when you cook mushroom. Nice ah, cooked mushroom. Yes. Comes with that. And uh, sushi. If you, have, you eat sushi, sushi, they have umami. Mm. This is usually a Japanese kind of thing that they talk about. If you do your research, you yes. see they talk about umami in Japanese cuisine because so like they balance the, everything. So it's like the, the residual feeling yes. you get, yes. the residual sense of. Niceness. Niceness. <laughs> you eat a sushi. Like if, eh? after you've swallowed, you're just like, hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> so there is your five principles. Five principles. Salt, uh, first, acid, acidity, sugar, sweetness, uh, umami, umami, and... Uh, Wait, we spoke about I'm it. Miss, missing one more. Spicy. Is it? Oh, yes, I recovered spicy. it. So, okay. so that would be spicy. like the um, chili in yes. the food, right? Yes. Or very strong... 
spice element. Spice element. Mostly okay. best example is Indian dishes, yeah? Yeah. Indian cuisine. It's very spicy. Yeah. So this is now another element that you need to consider. Mm -hmm. The spicy food, you don't go with the dry uh, acidic wines because oh, okay. it's like you're putting off a fire in your kitchen. Uh -huh. By pouring, pouring water. Uh, not water. Yeah. Actually, water is okay. By pouring an acid. Ah. If you have a, I don't know, sulfuric acid in your house okay. or I don't know, petrol. You just you know, inflame uh, there. You ju you, there's a fire <laughs> and you throw an acid. Yeah. So, this is a good example. You not pour, uh, you not put out, put out fire by pouring vinegar, yeah. which is uh, acidic. So, this is the same thing in your mouth. If you're having a very hot, spicy food, you don't... Uh, pair it with dry acidic wine because mm. it's very acidic as I mentioned yeah so you use sweet uh, <coughs> sweet wines oh. sweet wines okay. the same thing if you ever uh, uh, you bite something very acidic and you have honey in your house in your kitchen yeah. you take a spoon of honey yes. or when you have I don't know uh, uh, acid, acid acid, acid what do you do the best if you don't have all those medicines to use is a spoon of honey yeah so that's another principle that you use so spicy dishes you don't go heavy on the acidity part on on, on the tanning spot yeah. you use a sweeter wine good example a risley moscato yeah uh, but then pot wine will be also tricky because it's very high it's in acidity too, yeah. and it's also too, too sweet yeah it's it's okay with the sweetness yeah but it's too high in alcohol ah. also so you're it's having not typically very, very, appearing depends how uh, adventurous you are okay. but the basic rule is sweetness okay okay so okay. sweetness with spicy food sweet and spicy sweet and spicy oh, that's ah great yeah. okay that's a nice way to remember it yeah i know you've been out of the country for quite a bit mm. working in different places yeah. uh, but you deep in in and out of kenya yeah. uh, as a practitioner in wine yeah. industry what are some of the things that how are we doing comparatively to other people mm. or what are some of the things that you've observed here that um, that make you excited about what the future holds for anyone in wine yeah. in Kenya right now? Yes. So, uh, we, 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 we are really doing great. Yeah. I, I saw a lot of people doing wines. I saw a certain group of uh, women as well, men as well. Mostly women, I think they are more into it. Yeah. I saw a lot of people doing competitions outside Kenya and that made me proud. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel good to know that we have... Uh, a big, uh, <coughs> big kind of group uh, that are interested in wine. Yeah. And I've actually met a lot of sommeliers, like fully fledged sommeliers. Yeah. That are here in Kenya and also outside Kenya, there are so many other sommeliers. Yeah. Uh, like the place I was in Dubai, there are so many sommeliers who are Kenyan. Yeah. You go to most ships also, trans doing Pacific, transatlantic. You meet a lot of Kenyan sommeliers. As wow, well. that's uh, good. So this. This shows is an emerging market that a lot of people are focusing on. Yeah. It's a very nice career. If you get it well and you do your things right, yeah. you can go. Uh, uh, the sky is the limit. You the sky go, is the limit. The sky is always the limit. And I see also in Kenya, we have a few wineries that are also making wines. Yes. Here. So that's a good uh, trajectory that we are on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, many hotels around here you go to any hotels even here uh, where we are right now you just go there you meet a sommelier there true, true. so we are doing well we are <clears throat> focusing on this beverage is the way to go because uh, food in a restaurant they will always be there but yeah. what makes a uh, guest experience better is what wine they are using or what wine they are pairing with yeah. and what they will actually remember is the bottle of wine it's true many uh, uh, many times the guys will talk about the, a certain bottle I had I don't know in which country in which restaurant but not the food yeah. the food will remain the same the food is the same every the food is day. good but the wine makes good, it extra special makes it extra special food will always be there in restaurant there's no restaurant without food yeah. but the best restaurants have the best wines that's yeah. how it is you know? wow I like yeah. that yeah. Um, and before we let you go first of all thank you for making the time yeah uh, within your holiday that yes. you're home um, yes. for speaking to us and for sharing your wisdom. My pleasure. Um, and if you, last question before we let you go is yes. uh, what does the future hold for you as a sommelier uh, from Kenya yeah. representing across the world and if 
your public? How can people find you if you share your knowledge about wine on other platforms? Yes. Yeah, if you can leave us with that, um, we'll be happy to let you go. <laughs> yes. So um, I've seen basically the world for sure. I've traveled many places, but I'm happy to be back home and I want to focus uh, my attention also in understanding my own my own place, you know, because uh, I've traveled a lot and you understand other places, you you, you visit many places, go and you are celebrated outside uh, Kenya and you, they know you well outside, but not a lot of people know me here at home, so that's why, uh, and I'm happy when, when I did the Wine X when I got a chance to meet a lot of um, uh, sommeliers here and a lot of people in the industry, some are in the trade, some are in the imports. And I was happy to meet them, and uh, I want to focus uh, my attention also uh, here to understand uh, the importation, to understand the, the market itself, to understand uh, the sommelier business, the retail kind of sector. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to do, and yeah. um, I want to focus myself here. I'll be here for quite some time. Okay. And let's see uh, if other duties call in other countries also. Good. If someone call here in Kenya, then I'll. Be I think anyone's a service, um, I'm at uh, all. You're open for opportunities. I'm open for opportunities here. Uh, I'm open for opportunities here. Thank you so much. Thank you thank, for sharing. Thank you, thank and you. for your generosity, with yeah. your time. Yeah. And um, because I think this uh, these conversations are important. They are, they are. Um, There's always somebody listening, mm. maybe today or two years from now. Yeah. And... You know, this is a conversation that's stuck in time. Yeah. yeah if you need me to talk to people whenever you have the events, I'm free also. Yay. It's all right. Uh, awesome. I'll be there for people. Yeah. Okay, To great. share knowledge. If you don't share what you know, you, you don't even learn what it, you don't know. It's true. And it will disappear. <laughs> yeah, it will disappear as you evaporate. You forget everything. Yeah. Yeah. So right. thank you so much for, thank you. for that. Uh, books and wine we're over and out thank you for tuning in for another episode um, make sure you follow <coughs> books and wine on all social media platforms and if you learned one thing or two please share this episode with someone who would benefit from what you already learned um, until the next time bye